Dear Uncle Lloydy, questions I've got a few for you. Cause you've been alive for a while, that's what you do, and I know you've seen a thing or two. Oh, 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 I wanna pick your mind. Cause all of us here in Tromaville are waiting for the answers from you. Uncle Lloydy, if you're ready, boss has the questions for you. Hey now, everybody, and welcome to Dear Uncle Lloydy. Uh, the only show in which trauma fans all over the world and even citizens of Tromaville themselves can ask our fearless leader, the man, the myth, the creator of the Toxic Avenger, the head of Trauma Studios, which is the actual longest independent film studio in the world, and the motherfucking legend. Give it up for my real dad, Lloyd Kaufman. I well, thank you both. Thank you so much. Uh, very, uh, I love you and uh, very uh, trauma team and Toxie appreciate how you've been drilling down into the history and psychology and the, uh, the art of trauma. It is always an honor, sir. Like I've told you before, you know, I love you. I've been infatuated with trauma since I was a kid. I will be a trauma fan for life, as you know. But uh, the reason we're here today is I've actually commissioned some fans, some trauma fans from all over the world. Uh, and if you pay attention closely, you might even see some trauma all-stars and some citizens from Tromaville. And uh, are you ready to help some fans that are in distress with their problems and pressing life issues, Lloyd? Because that's what this show is actually all about. Well, uh, let me say this about that. That's what Nixon used to say. Let me say this about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we wouldn't be here for 50 years without our fans. The trauma fans are the secret sauce they uh, support every movie we make so that we don't go out of business. And after 30 years, each film, like Toxic Avenger, is now a, a billion dollar mm -hmm. reimagining with a lot of stars. Uh, the Museum of Modern mm -hmm. Art made, uh, had the world premiere of Return to Return to New uh, uh the Museum of the Movie. It, in other words, it takes time for these movies to uh, get the word of mouth. But our fans are visionary. Our fans get it. And uh, luckily, enough of them show up at the movie theaters, so we can still play a few theaters and, uh, you know, don't lose too much money on our movies. And then eventually, after 30 years, uh, Tromeo and Juliet makes uh, quite a bit of money thanks to, uh, I don't mean quite a bit of money, but, uh, you know, becomes profitable thanks to the fact that James Gunn became uh, <laughs> the number one uh, director in uh, the film industry. What I love about him is he never hides his uh, affiliation with Troma. Uh, I, I, so much. Yeah, I'm so I'm so proud of him. I was like, sure, you sure are, uh, you sure are too. I've been. Oh, he's a great guy. He's so such. But the, I commissioned some of Tremo, uh, Tremoville's finest, and I actually wanted to pick your brain with uh, their pressing matters. If uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to play the first one here. Hey, Jazz here. Um, so my fiance hasn't been sleeping with me for a couple of weeks, and. He claims that a couple weeks ago he ate lunch at school and ever since then he's been dripping some green goo from his, you know, nether regions and I feel like lunch at school is code word for another girl. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how to confront him about it. So any advice or any pointers you can give me about how I can speak to him about the situation would be amazing. Thank you. Okay, um, I need a second to think about it. The fiance won't sleep with her. He is dripping uh, green slime. Yes. Uh, 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 madam, that's an interesting question. Uh, that actually happened to uh, my father, and that, I believe, is how uh, uh, Charles Kaufman, the uh, 
creator of Mother's Day was eventually uh, created. Uh, if I, I was there, I was five years old, and I, I watched it all. And apparently, the if you use the slime, it uh, it will work as a um, not just as an aphrodisiac, uh, but uh, if you uh, use it as a uh, instead of a condom, uh, put it you know put it on uh, your fiance's uh, genitalia, it will prevent uh, any sort of uh, social disease and uh, he will have the best ejaculation of his time of his life um, I, I, that's all I remember from childhood uh, well uh, there you go Jasmine uh, thank you for the question and I hope that uh, I hope that works for you you're welcome <laughs> all righty sir coming up next is another fine citizen of Tromaville his name is Duck he has this question for you Hey, Balls. Hey, uh, Uncle Lloyd. I uh, had a little question for you. So, I tend to overthink everything and uh, stress it out all the time. So, do you have any advice on how to knock that shit out? Um, at any rate, uh, he's got anxiety. Uh, I, I do. I, I get it. I get every morning I have a, a anxiety. Uh, especially uh, when I'm hungover. But uh, I, I, uh, uh, my suggestion, uh, this is actually rather practical, uh, have you ever heard of Lexapro? Uh, uh, it's a pretty good uh, drug for anxiety. Uh, you might try that. Uh, then there's um, the, uh, I'm a little old for it, but in the, uh, when I was at Yale, I think the, uh, the uh, LSD was uh, pretty good in terms of uh, sort of expanding my mind to get rid of it. Uh, I, I honestly, I can't, I, I can't uh, answer that question. I really don't know uh, how you do it because I'm, I'm at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm so fucked up. My psychiatrist, I have a psychiatrist for this, uh, the drug psychiatrist. He's given me all the drugs he's, he feels he can give me. He suggested microdoses. That was it, microdoses. I, I just finished two weeks ago. My wife and I. Uh, I I went to him because I've been really depressed and uh, moody and all that. So they came up with a wonderful solution. What's the guy's name? Duck. Duck uh, my yes. wife and I, uh, my wife and doctor uh, uh, told me I have to stop all booze and all drugs. The last two things in my 77 year old end of uh, life that I like, I can't do. So uh, maybe a young man who, who if, uh, doesn't drink and maybe no drugs, Maybe that will help you with anxiety. Doesn't work for me, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm going to try to get uh, those microdoses. The doctor said uh, that there's great research and positive research, but it's illegal in New York. But it's illegal in uh, Massachusetts. I go, I'm going to go somewhere where it's legal. I might have to. He might have to try some microdose and then see. Uh, we'll see. That is a well, I haven't tried. I haven't tried it, but um, I'm going to because uh, the hmm. person my wife trusts uh, said it was okay. But uh, now I haven't, had a, I haven't had a drink or a pot or or anything other a drug uh, since uh, other than uh, my uh, prescriptions uh, for two weeks. Wow! And you haven't killed anybody yet? No, well, myself maybe coming pretty close. <laughs> All righty, well, let's, uh, let's move on here, Lloyd. Yes. I, we got yes. a uh, Tromaville, uh, per, we got a Tromaville fan. Uh, he's actually, his name's Dan, and he wants to ask Uncle Lloyd. Hey, this is Dan from Bolger, Pennsylvania, and I had a question for Uncle Lloyd. How do I stop my uncontrollable flatulence? Well, uh, it's a part of the, one of the rules of writing, uh, trauma uh, screenplays, uh, is a, a formula that w uh, came up, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who, it may have been William Faulkner, that farts uh, plus uh, fat equals funny. Now, some people say fat plus farts equals funny. So uh, why not uh, uh, make some sound effects, uh, record some sound effects. Uh, if they're good, uh, send them into trauma and uh, we'll give you credit. Farts by uh, whomever. Uh, I, uh, I I can't help. Uh, you know, I'm 77 years old. I'm the old people fart. I mean, I'm farting all the time. I'm so embarrassed. You know, I, uh, so uh, I don't know what to tell you. 
Well, there you go, Dan. You, your asshole could be the new uh, star in a trauma film. Very cool. Yes, Dan. Thank you for that excellent question. Uh, Next up, we actually have somebody I think that you are actually very familiar with there, Lloyd. Oh, tell me. His name is Jason Y. Oh, no kidding. As Arby from Poultry Guys. (laughs) Oh, my God. And he actually. Yes, I would say Jason uh, Y is uh, (coughs) definitely one of the most talented actor person with whom I've ever worked. He is so good in Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead. Uh, which, by the way, you can see safely and exclusively on Troma Now, our streaming service. It's free the first month and then only four ninety five. And, uh, and there's a wonderful, uh, if you get the Blu-ray, there's a lovely, uh, a really good uh, documentary behind the scenes. Poultry in Motion. Yes, Poultry in Motion. I it's, have it. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's sad. It's funny. It's more educational than a year at uh, $80,000 a year film school. And Jason's in a lot, obviously stars in both. Uh, he's terrific. And he, uh, you know, we, we, uh, he went to uh, hell to uh, make that. We all did. We all did. As you saw in the documentary, we all went to hell. And boy, was I happy I cast him. He is so good. Sings, he dances. He, and he's moved out to Hollywood and he's doing very well. I think he just got, uh, what was he? I just saw him in something. Uh, oh, he yeah, just wrote a book. Uh, it was in the, uh, I thought I saw him in Power of the Dog. Uh, anyway, keep going. Uh, he wrote a book? What kind of book? He, he, wrote, he wrote sort of like a kind of horror sci-fi book, and it's really good. Great. I, I wish he was coming out something. too. But uh, oh, I'd love to read it. Thank his, you. He's got a lot going on right now. In fact, he had actually wanted to ask you. Hi, my name is Jason from New Jersey, and the question I have today for Lloyd is, Lloyd, you were able to raise two very successful, independent, strong daughters. So what kind of advice or life lessons would you give to a first time dad eh, whose daughter just turned two in November? I'm very curious to hear your take on fatherhood. Thank you very much. Well, (laughs) I would not say I'm a very good father, uh, uh, but I think to some extent, uh, uh, let the woman do, uh, you know, I mean, if the kids, my kids are okay. None of them's in prison. Uh, they're all making a living and uh, uh, doing rather well, actually. Um, uh, one of them married the guy who created Blue Apron. So, uh, oh, nice. yeah, she could be able to pay the rent. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, I don't know. I've not been terribly uh, there, um, obviously, with my career. And uh, that might have been a good thing, uh, you know. And my <laughs> wife is the, the nicest, most uh, lovely person. Uh, she and really the, is. Yeah, I got to see her trauma. Yeah, you know, Pat. She's the best. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, like, she's, a, she's, a, she's, a, uh, a, she's one of the producers. She retired from being commissioner of the state of New York for 20 years under four different uh, Republican and Democratic uh, Democrats. She retired a co- so, uh, right before COVID, and she... Uh, was one of the three producers of hashtag Shakespeare's Shinstone. So um, she's she's great. Now she's working for Mayor Adams. Uh, they called her in because uh, you know, the entertainment area, culture area needs to be uh, whatever. You know, it's like calling in uh, Bob Iger to back to Disney, right? The CEO of Disney who <laughs> left uh, two years a few uh, two la- years later. He's he's back because uh, they need some uh, vision. Proper vision. All righty. Let's, uh, I've got a couple more for you here, Lloyd. I'm not going to keep you. Hold it. I don't know. Did I answer Jason's uh, question? Uh, uh, I mean, more or less, yeah. I yeah, know. just don't. I, I think, Jason, uh, in my case, I, I, I really haven't, uh, I don't really care that much. Uh, and the kids sort of, you know, they know I'm a little. And also, uh, I think the best is don't be too uh, hovering uh, and l- leave it to the, uh, to the mother. <laughs> probably not great advice. But in my case, it is because I've got this uh, mental issues, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, as you see in my movies, uh, I can't show them to my when I had kids. Uh, now, once they went to college, at college, uh, they had never seen any of my films, and when they went to college, everybody would say, "You what? Your father's a big detox? What? New class of Newcomb High? Terra Firmer? Tromio? What?" And suddenly, they got all this positive uh, reinforcement. So, uh, 
Lily Hayes, by the way, the, the oldest, she rebelled by going to Harvard Business School, thinking I'd be pissed off. But ha ha, I loved it. I thought it was great. She could make a lot of money. But then, uh, you know, the, she started getting harassed and, uh, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, she was making, you know, uh, they'd have $500 bottles of wine at dinner and stuff. And uh, it was just so ugly that she uh, went back to the film world. <laughs> she's, she's writing, uh, we've made some movies, uh, shorts together. We wrote a short story together. We made a couple of, we made a Halloween special. Which is our oh, nice. Now. We made a Christmas cartoon uh, together. Uh, and uh, she's uh, writing, a, 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 actually, she's editing a major project, uh, a, a sequel to All the Love You Can. She's uh, producing that. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. That. You yeah, actually it, gave it, me a screener of that. I met you at Borders probably 20 years ago. Yeah, I remember. I went out to the trunk of your car, and I wanted to see it. It wasn't out yet. You gave me a screener of it. What a mo I mean, I, I still... Great documentary, right? It's on It's incredible. I, 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 it, it's funny. I was talking with my wife about cans, and, like, she didn't realize the hypocrisy of that. And I watch that one night so you could just see. I mean... Well, the sequel, we shot the sequel 10 years later. Uh, we're still uh, well, 12 years. It was, you know, we have no money, so it's uh, a long time in coming. But the uh, rough cut is, is completed. And uh, uh, Brian, uh, McNut M Brian McNulty, who worked for us for a long time, is doing this as a, uh, he wants to support Choma, so he's, e he's edited the thing. And I think it's going to be really interesting uh, because uh, basically it was the last time we went to Cannes. So I think the movie is going to be called Cancelled. Cancelled. <laughs> and uh, if you want to get a sense of what it was like uh, that uh, final year, and how horrible they behave, uh, the, the can people, the, uh, the, the thugs who, uh, you know, the security people and all that. Uh, there's a, a documentary I made called, uh, it's only about 15 minutes, from uh, Festival to Fascism, the Cannes Film Festival. And you can see how we, uh, you know, we filmed a lot of the abuse. And, uh, uh, you know, they wouldn't let us, they wouldn't let Kabuki Man wear his uh, makeup. You know, obviously he's not a terrorist. But it was okay for the Disney characters to wear masks and carry prop guns. It's it's in that little documentary. Don't and even they, get me uh, started on Disney. <laughs> they, they put us up against the wall. They put us up against the wall. And uh, I think Catherine, or one of the actors who was with us, one of the female actors that started crying, it was like the almost the minute we got there. And uh, you'll see John Brennan, one of the producers who's in the uh, movie, in the little documentary from Festival to Fascism. But it's uh, canceled, which is the uh, sequel to All the Love You Can. I think you'll see that uh, yeah, if you're me, you don't want to go there again. I'm definitely all about that. I'll be looking forward to that. But now we're on, well, since we're still on the topic of Troma All Stars, there is a citizen at Tremonville, other than JSY, that wants to ask you a question. It is the legendary Debbie Rashawn. Hmm. Wow, Debbie. Well, <laughs> all I can tell you is Debbie is incredibly talented, a hundred percent dedicated to the world of independent uh, movies, and has made the sacrifice, as have I, to stay in the, the underground and try to be involved in. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but they sound like dogs uh, fighting outside, which is kind of exciting. Um, <laughs> uh, Debbie's terrific; she's great, and uh, she came down to, from Halifax to, to do. Uh, a starring role in hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. Uh, she's hilarious. Uh, most of her, uh, we we kind of go together in the movie a lot. Uh, I play uh, uh, the senator, and she. No, I'm sorry. I play uh, the uh, uh, one of the major pharmaceutical uh, officers, uh, female. I play my. Uh, Cal well, I don't want to spoil it, but she's terrific. She's great. Wonderful. She really job. is. Uh, uh, she's great uh, in everything yeah, absolute, she does. Uh, ultimate. Uh, Trauma actor and much better, no question about it. Hey Lloyd, I have a question for you. Now, while I could ask questions about why do you like uh, Preston Sturges movies and all these other things that are of interest to me, I am wondering, seeing you've played so many roles in movies and I'm faced with this dilemma right now, I wanna know if you have to buy a dress in real life, do you go for comfort or sex appeal? 
What say you, Lloyd? Thank you. Thanks for taking my question. Hmm, now that's a very good question. I would say, I would say I go for a, a economy. Uh, I try to find a, an ugly old woman who uh, has a similar body uh, that to mine. And uh, <laughs> if I'm lucky, <laughs> she'll lend me her wardrobe for a while or sometimes uh, thrift stores are very good. Uh, I, I believe whatever I wore in hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm or with being spoilers here, uh, I play my own sister in that movie, uh, which is a big mistake. But in any way, there I am. And uh, I look better as a, uh, a female, uh, you know, a 77 year, 70, I guess I was about 74 when we made the movie. Uh, uh, I look better as a 74 year old woman, certainly, than I do as a man. So there's, it's not so bad. <laughs> I look better than uh, Representative uh, Santos, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah, much better. I'm 50 years <laughs> older. I, I believe I look more feminine, I hope. All right, my next one. Well, thank you, De thank you, Debbie. It was a very good question. And uh, oh. <laughs> I, I believe that Debbie and I are going to be uh, in a new movie by another director, a very good director, uh, although I haven't heard from him since I've agreed to be in the movie. But... Uh, I'm very much looking forward to working with her. We did a movie together called Nowhere Man. And if you want to see Debbie Rashawn being a serious, straightforward actor, um, I think we did this about 15 years ago. Uh, she is uh, really good. Nowhere Man. Try to catch it. She's terrific. Wonderful independent film. You know, it should have gotten a lot more attention. But, you know, Sundance, we'll have to check has, it out. Sundance has its favorites, you know, it's, it's elite. Well, I tell you what, Lloyd, I only got a couple more for you here. Uh, okay, very good, because i got to get off some, yeah. My, my buddy, Matt Onesti Wheels, uh, he is a comedian. Uh, he's an up-and-coming comedian. He had a question for you. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? So, a quick question. What is the best prank you've ever pulled or ever had pulled on you? Oh, there have been some doozies. I, I may have to come back to that one. I, I and I know I, I uh, prank people, but I, uh, I can't think of it. You know, I'm a pretty, for the most part, you know, I'm so serious. And as you can tell by uh, the kind of movies I make, like Terror Farmer <laughs> and the movies that I bring out, like Hannibal the Musical and Blood Sucking Freaks, that I'm, I, I would put myself more in the uh, world of Jane Campion. Uh, you know, we, we don't really like to do pranks. Uh, or receive the pranks. But, oh, I remember one, uh, and we used it in a movie uh, on one of the Toxic Avenger films. We had a porta potty and I was uh, uh, in there minding my own business, and they started to uh, rock it, and they were going to push it over while I was t in the bathroom, you know, taking the drink. <laughs> and they didn't push it over, but they were starting to rock it, and, uh, oh, my, that was very unpleasant because the water did uh, go uh, up into... Uh, my lower region uh, actually went into my it went as high as my genitalia oh, and no. the porta party water is not very delightful uh so we you know work with it as we say at trauma work with it so uh in uh in uh what is it terra firmer you will actually see uh yaniv sharon the production assistant who uh, is in the porta potty and they push it over and uh, the results are uh, uh, show you that brown is the uh, warmest color all right, well, I'm just By the way, brown is the warmest color is the title of the documentary, full-length documentary about the making of Shakespeare Shitstorm. Oh, I can't wait for that. Or can you even say when that's coming out yet or no? Mm. Uh, well, the Blu-ray is uh, being worked on. That uh, documentary is still uh, being buttoned up. It's uh, uh, Bjarni, uh, Bjarni uh, Gattur, who uh, lives in Iceland. But he he comes here for all his uh, all our movies. He even went to Albania with us, where we had the trained whales, uh, and um, uh, then came back to New York with us, uh, all on his own dime. He knows more about trauma movies balls than I think you do or I do. Mm. Uh, anyway, he's uh, done a wonderful job assembling, uh, uh, you know, thousands of uh, video, uh, thousands of digital. You know, I think we had four behind the scenes cameras, and uh, and he's put it together beautifully and. Justin Martell, is, uh, as a producer, has supervised very closely, and I think it's going to be very educational and very entertaining. Honestly, I don't know about the documentaries on Netflix. 
But I could tell you, poultry in motion is is better than is better than any I've seen. Honestly, it's better. And it really is. I've seen it several times. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's funny as hell, and it's kind of sad because there I am in the middle of it, uh, uh, trying to you know make a movie with people fighting and fucking and clucking <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean everything. You know, it's uh, it's and it's hilarious. Gabe Friedman uh, is responsible. He also wrote most of Poultry Guys. I'm going to, I'm going to see it. We're about to go to uh, 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 Liam Regan, who has been on our movies for years, almost eight, since he was a teenager. He uh, has made a movie which I produced, and we're going to California. Uh, it's opening here in the East, uh, February 11th, at a few theaters uh, called uh, e- uh, Eating Miss Campbell. Uh, to oh, aren't you going to the Smodcast Cinema? The, 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 the... Yes, yeah. Kevin Smith invited us, and. Uh, We've got a couple of New York theaters, basically one night stands, but we go to LA to Lemley Cinema and uh, Lem- Lemley Le- Glendale it gives us a week. If we do business, they'll hold us over. Beautiful. Uh, it's not easy to do business though with uh, no advertising money, but uh, eventually uh, eating Miss Campbell, it's, I think it's a, a, appeals to a wider audience than uh, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstone for sure. It's a trauma movie that I think Liam has been able to not make it as as extreme as our films. I think you're going to love it. I think you will love it. it I'm definitely it, uh, checking, looking forward yeah, to checking it. It won the audience award at the uh, the big uh, British, the most important British genre festival, I believe, called Fright Fest. Hmm. Uh, it's a big one, and he won the audience award. Pretty cool. Cool. Well, I got two more for you, Lloyd. We'll close this up. Uh, this one, okay. Jimmy the Hair Guy. And, and hey, Jimmy. Uh, how's your hair hanging? Hey, Uncle Lloyd. Uh, this is Jimmy from Philadelphia. Uh, I was wondering, uh, how long should somebody wait before they propose to their significant other? Uh, I want to make sure it's not too soon or too late. Or I figured you could help me with this. Thanks, Uncle Lloyd. How long before you propose? Yeah, what do you want to know? What's done? What's too soon or too long? Or I would wait. I mean, how old is Jimmy? Would you say? He's a younger dude. I would say he's probably, what, 20, 30 years old, maybe? I'd say you don't want to rush these things. I would wait 30 years before you get married. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure, it's, you know. <laughs> anyway, to, luckily, my wife, if my wife were home, I'd have to say something else. But luckily, she's not home. <laughs> no, I'm very lucky. We're 49 years of marriage, and that's incredible, uh, man. You very know, lucky. Just, in this day and age, that is just uh, it's, it's a miracle. It's like a uh, you know a, a dog living uh, 500 years or something. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, uh, you know, we went out together for two years. Uh, we didn't quite live together because I was living with my mother, of course. Uh, but um, it, you know, it, it, we were you know very serious. But the week didn't know each other. Two years isn't enough. And lucky for me, I, I, I got lucky. She fell in love with me and I with her, and, uh, and nobody can quite figure it out. She's a Southern Belle, a, a debutante, uh, uh, president of the New York Junior League, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm uh, something else. So uh, kind of yin and yang. But <laughs> uh, most of our friends have, I, I cannot under- in fact, John Avelson, every time I got to, he wrote, he directed Rocky and Karate Kid, Cry Uncle, which you can, a wonderful film on uh, Truman Now, hilarious. He, every time we got together, which was quite often uh, in L.A., he, uh, he, you know, I still can't figure it out what it is with you and Pat. Has he had, I think, the three wives or something? Or Anyway, he had uh, multiple marriages and uh, I just got, it was luck. I just got lucky. Just got I'm pretty lucky okay. myself with my wife. So good for you. Good for you. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's uh, let's move on here, Lloyd. Yes. I have another young lady that uh, is looking for some help here. Hey, Uncle Lloydy. It is X Tina from Pittsburgh, hanging out with some friends here. You may recognize them. I bet you know what artists they are. Anyway, I'm wondering. Does Uncle Lloydy ever have anxiety? You seem like you got it all together. You're go, go, go. Such a go-getter. But at some point in time, we all experience some form of anxiety. And just wondering how Uncle Lloydy would cope with it. We would love to know. (laughs) 
uh, yes, very much so. Uh, I'm very uh, anxious about uh, going on uh, Zooms and interviews. And But what really makes me anxious, uh, Extina, is uh, going to uh, like a cocktail party. If I'm on, if I, once I get on stage and I get, and I've sort of thought through what I'm going to say or what jokes I've written, uh, uh, you know, if it's all about me as narcissist, I'm okay with that. But say I go to a cocktail party, I, 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 I stand around and uh, don't say anything. I'm, I don't know who to talk to. And, and uh, usually nobody's, uh, my wife is, uh, is the one invited to those things. And uh, nobody, uh, you know, you talk to somebody, uh, she's very popular. So I'm on, I, I, you know, she, she goes around and, but, uh, you know, nobody ever asks what we do. They, they're always kind of looking around the room for uh, who, who might help them uh, with the uh, hedge fund or whatever it is. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but once I, I think, uh, I don't know, Extina, if you're a performer, maybe uh, when you're on stage, you, you'll be all right. But uh, the only thing I can say, I, I really don't have any suggestions because I'm as anxious and, and as fucked up as I've ever been. Uh, you know, Moody's high and up and down and... Uh, so uh, now I'm not in the, the shrink, and my wife took uh, cut me off of booze and drugs, so I'm uh, totally uh, miserable. What about masturbation? Can that help? Only balls. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, masturbation, only this wonderful show that balls is uh, creating is uh, giving me a little hope. I always like to keep it classy, Lloyd. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm extremely. Well, you know, I'm an ultra filmmaker, partly in large part because I wanted everything to be under my control and do everything myself. So um, I'm extremely proficient uh, in masturbation. Mm, I'm quite a pro myself. Yeah. <laughs> Next, I don't like to brag about man, it. You know. We got it. I'll tell you, here's the last one here for you, Lloyd. Sure. And it's from uh, Stephen. Greetings from Australia, Lloyd. It's Stevie Boy here. I've actually got two questions for you. Number one, word on the street is Shakespeare's Shitstorm is going to be the last movie you direct. Is that true? And number two, if that is true, and you do decide to uh, do Toxic Avengers Part 5, who's going to direct it? Uh, hashtag Shakespeare's Shitstorm, I, it's, I would say 60-40, because unless some amazing script that is beautifully, I'm too lazy to write something, Unless something magnificent comes along uh, that's crazy and guaranteed to lose money, uh, that has some sort of purpose and is entertaining, uh, I, um, I doubt I'm going to direct much. I do have to reveal that um, Martin Murray, uh, who is a, um, a, a mentor of, uh, I mean, he's a mentee of, uh, of Steve Martin, and he's uh, about to get his master's in uh, writing from Columbia University. He and I are developing a, a kind of a more serious, actually kind of a serious thing, a dark a movie uh, based on crime and punishment. So there you have it, fine people of Tromoville. Until next time on Balls, that's my buddy Lloyd Kaufman. Thanks for watching, dear Uncle Lloydy, and don't forget to tune in to Troma Now, where you could watch the best Troma has to offer, streaming 24 hours a day. Fuck Netflix, Hulu can eat my ass. Get rid of all them trash streaming sites because we all know the only streaming service we need is Troma Now because the future is now. This is Balls. Peace and love. Peace and love. Yeah.